with a grandma that smokes cigars. That's creepy in and of itself. I mean, some grandmas like the taste of a good Cuban. I love the taste of a good grandma. That's how I, I switched I, back to the D&D okay, okay. Okay, so I don't know if you mean... You know exactly what he means. I don't know if he means fucking grandmas or actually eating them. I'm not editing this part out. I don't imagine, like, old people would taste very good. That'd be like... No, I figured it would taste very stringy and out of date. I figured you'd want something like... It's like, the same the thing. How do you feel about raisins? If you'll eat a raisin, you'll eat an old person. No, dude, I fucking hate raisins. See, old no, people... You won't <laughs> like old people. Yeah, like, yeah, they have I'm no not... marbling to no, them at all. It's like pl- it's like eating a wrinkled prune. Yeah, I love like, I love prunes. Or like oh, yeah. like a, are, a, a piece are. of steak that's been dry aged way too fucking long. Like it's just all pellicle. You like, mean it's just mummified? It's just yeah. dry and green. And green? Yes, and green. Yeah, that's what dry. Yeah, all the exterior of dry aging does that. Yeah, but you, but you cut that green. part. But you cut that part off normally. Yeah, but you know, yeah, only I rich people dry age real, steak. Man. Like, I'm going to buy this pound of steak so I can sit it in the Eat fridge. Eat it in 60 it in. ways. <laughs> yeah, turn exactly. it into a uh, quarter pound of steak by the time I eat it. I thought dry, dry aging's kind of cool, but it's kind of not. It's like fucking pointless. Like, just like fucking marinade. Marinades are so much better in every way. It is, it is a much better way of going about it. I do prefer marinating things. Then it gets all into those nook and crannies. It's dry. Like, you're eating paper. Yeah, you, ever, you, ever, you ever marinate steak in Italian dressing because it's I've marinated oh, dude. steak and pineapple juice. That's straight yes. up the poor man's way of marinating a steak, is throwing it in Robusto Italian. Oh, yeah! <laughs> and then you make a good chalapene steak with onions? That's where it's goaded. You could do that shit with a lot of stuff. I fucking... You could do chicken that way, too. Yep, I've done chicken that way, too. Chicken is very good that way. Chicken also, is just fucking awesome. I've also done it with fish. Fish? Yep. There's, like... Sushi is just really good. I love sushi. Uh, I wouldn't eat sushi that way. I think. Well, yeah, I'm just talking about things I like to eat. <laughs> I would not marinate my sushi in Italian dressing. In, dress in like soy that. sauce. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> no, you do it in freaking uh, marinara sauce. Uh, and nice. then classify it as authentic no. Italian delicacies. No, the only fish that should have tomato sauce on it in an Italian format should be calamari. Maybe anchovies if you're putting on pizza. Like those. It's like Philadelphia rolls. Get the fuck out of here. Cheese. <laughs> What's a Philadelphia roll? <laughs> it's got cream cheese in it. It's fucking gross. Cream cheese is good, but people put cream cheese in way too much shit that doesn't need cream cheese. Do not cheese. put that it is... in a sushi roll, man. Just yeah, not no, put no, it in it like a lot of things. It doesn't need to be in a sushi roll. No, it doesn't. It goes on it... bagels and then whatever a cheesecake is. That's where they go. <laughs> whatever I've, I've been trying to figure is. out what cheesecake is, but it's fucking good. It's a cake. That's all I know. Yeah, but it's not a cake, though. It's oh, a man, it's... cake. It's it has the same cake. It's made is like butter. Get the fuck away from me. I don't make cheesecake. I make actual food. No, well, I, I like mean... cheesecake. Cheesecake's delicious. Yeah, exactly. What the fuck? Actual food. Like what? <laughs> like brownies? I ate, a, I ate a gas station che- cheesecake. Uh, okay. I had some ice cream cake here. in the fridge. I'm gonna be honest here. If, me you, put, if you put a cheesecake... And a tray of brownies in front of me. I'm probably gonna go with the cheesecake nine times out of ten. It depends. Are the brownies fresh? Fresh brownies? Yeah, they've really gotta awesome. be. I love doing like a fresh cold double brownie. fudge brownies. Look, unless I'm dealing with basic bitch cheesecake, like nothing has been done to it. It's just the cheesecake. The hot brownies ain't gonna beat it. If you even put a little bit of strawberry reserves on that thing, I'm going with the cheesecake. Listen, it just depends how much weed I've smoked, man. If I have enough weed, I'm gonna grab both. Oh, no, no, no. If I have the option, I definitely will grab both. I'm saying if you yeah, have to, like, you to choose together. one or the other. Stick that cheesecake between those two brownies. Are you guys an like end brownie piece or a center brownie piece? That is so fat. And... Amazing. Because I personally... Should we start at some point? <laughs> I've got a nice little chocolate bar here, so I don't give a fuck. Keep talking. Yeah. We're having a good time anyway. Get out of here. Uh, well, it's... Uh, I'm trying to think here, so... If you get when, whenever you guys think think we're ready to go, then we'll start up. And there's not too much explanation to this, very little, and you already have your sheets. To know Ooh, what you're doing. Spooky I'm playing ghost. A, yeah, I'm playing a ghost. His name's Keith, by the way. That's my ghost. Okay, your his ghost name is Keith. Ghost. My ghost's name is Keith. I'm just gonna play me. Just play <laughs> Keith. 
pronounces it Keith. Keith, like Keith. like like K E E F. <laughs> yeah, Keith. Oh, my name Keith. <laughs> Oh, my name's Keith. Keith my, my name's I Keith. I come I from I Alabama. My, my name's Keith. I go by Stephen on weekends. <laughs> At the Rock Club. Oh shit! We get to have porn names. I want to be Steve. Oh, I gotta, I gotta be, I gotta be Sally Thundercock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm willing to go with that. See, there's a lot of Ingle people Bush. out there who really like chicks with dicks, and I just don't Keith, really fully understand Keith it. Dinglebush, was that what you said your name is? Oh, that Keith is a Dingleberry that is, Bush. That is a '70s porn star of a ghost. Yeah, because no um, modern porn stars have bush. Well, yeah, no. That, that Everybody's all about the shaved. That, that went out of style in like the early '90s. Yeah, yeah. certain games Ex still do it, except in like French porn. Yeah, but French people are just dirty. That's true. At least it's not wrong. as creepy as uh, German porn. Sure. No, I mean, that's just that's just that's just traumatizing. Uh, I don't mean to be that guy, but you know, nothing surprising from a certain uh, country that may have done something in the 1940s <laughs> and 20s. Maybe we should start. <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, to give you guys a little bit of backstory on what you're going to be doing, so. This is this little uh, one-shot session that we're doing is entitled "The Haunting of Castle Delnor," and this is basically what's going to happen is there is a, a castle which I have constructed a map. Uh, I'm not going to show it to you, but if, I'm going to tell you where you're going to start, and then I can tell you where you can go from there. Um, you are ghosts in this castle, and there are ten people in the castle. Now the thing is, is Baron Delnor has just died. And you are the ghosts of long-lost relatives that still haunt the castle. And the thing is, is that you don't really like any of these people because most of them are dicks. And the whole thing that you're doing at this point is trying to scare them out of the castle because the whole reason why they're there is they're trying to spend a night in the castle so that they can claim ownership of it. And because the castle is haunted, that is basically their challenge. Is they know spooky shit's going to happen, but they really want that castle. So your job is to scare the fuck out of them or kill them or get them out of that castle in any way, shape, or form. And um, I'm going to say right now the way that we're going to start is that there is a, uh, a main gallery that is uh, on, in, the, in the castle, and that's where you guys are going to start out, and that's also where five of the ten individuals who are in the castle are mulling around a bit. Um, there are uh, two men and three women. Now, the other thing is, uh, or sorry, three men and two women. I stand corrected. Um, and you guys, because you're ghosts, you're incorporeal, which means they can't see you unless you choose to be seen. So you guys can do what you want from there. Um, like I said, there are five people in the room. There are two of them sitting together on a couch. One of them appears to be looking out the window at the evening sky. It is raining outside with a classic thunderbolt. And uh, the other one, uh, uh, one of them appears to be tending the fire while the other one is sitting in a chair off in the other corner of the room. So you can choose to stay in here or you could do, choose to go to different places in the castle and see if you can look around for various things. I'm going to go to the washroom. The bathrooms? Okay, yeah. so you're going to... All right, so in order to get to the bathrooms, you're going to have to pass through uh, the dining room and the kitchen, and then you will get to the uh, area where the bathroom is. So af after floating through various walls, you float through one wall, and you come face-to-face -face with a toilet. All right, I'm going to possess the toilet. <laughs> I knew okay. that's where he was going. Okay. Okay, you're going to possess the toilet. Okay, so you have taken possession of the toilet. Are you going to try and move the toilet? No, I'm chilling now. You're chilling. Okay, you're just going to wait for that moment when somebody has to go use the can. All right. So oh, I'm a patient Raka, poltergeist. Raka has his, his thing done already. So Purity and Kane, you guys are still in this main room. What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to look around the room to see if there's anything useful around that I can haunt. I was about, I was just about to ask, what's in this room? Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is um, roll your... Where all the ghost hoes at? <laughs> ghost. 
Um, all right. So what, I'm gonna have, what I'm going to have you guys do is um, I'm just going to tell you what's in the room because you can see everything. And you guys have also, because you're ghosts. I was going to say, do we really need to roll? Because we would have been here for no. how long at this point? Yeah, that's fair. So, But the other thing is you guys also have dark vision, so you can see in shadows and everything else. So that nothing's really going to avoid your gaze. Uh, so there's some furniture in the room. Like I said, there's a chair and a couch that people are sitting on currently. Uh, there's a glass table in the middle of the room. There's also a fireplace, which is being stoked by somebody else. He's poking fire poker. Uh, so there's also a fire poker. There's a clock on the mantle, along with several pictures and dishes. Um, there's a hutch in the back. It looks like on the inside of it, uh, it has uh, some figurines and stuff of some uh, knights, dragons, and various other things. Um, and other than that, there are some pictures, uh, portraits, really painted portraits that are on the wall as well, and some uh, end tables and stuff with drawers that are closed. You don't necessarily know what's in the drawers. Okay. Um, hmm. I think I might want to go exploring. Okay, if you want to, because there are only five, there are ten of them total. Five of them are in here. The other five are in various other places around the castle. All so right. you can, uh, so you can go and search somewhere else. So you can ju uh, jump out of the room. Really good. Do you want to work together or do you want to work separately on this? The other one, I forgot what your porny name is. Kane. Uh, Kane. Oh, yeah. I don't even know if I gave my character a name. Oh, yeah, it's just me. <laughs> Kane, do you yeah. want to work together on scaring them, or do you want to work independently? Let's work together. Alrighty. All right. You want to stay in the so, room? Yeah, let's stay in this room. I think this is a good first main room. We can move, plus. Like, can they see us? No, you're incorporeal right now. The only way that they can see you is if you choose to be seen. Oh, okay, then yeah. Or, if they, or if they figure out that you're possessing. Well, then I'll just, you know. Make sure never get caught. That would be a generally good idea. Hmm. What was in the room again to possess? Sorry. I was trying to fix something on the... the there screen. was... Uh, there's a, uh, a couch and a chair that people are both sitting on. There's a glass table in the center. There's a, there's a fireplace with a fire going. There's a man attending that. Um, there are hutches with various figurines and stuff on them. There's a clock and uh, dishes that are propped up on the mantel above the fireplace. And you also have um, a uh, a few little chests and stuff on on the, on the side of the room with drawers in them. You don't know what's in the drawers. Well, if we have somebody sitting on one of the chairs, the couches, do you want to um, do you want to maybe get them to go right into that glass uh, table, or are we just going to scare them, or do you want to kill them? As long as it gets them out of the house, any method is uh, is acceptable. We could send them flying into the glass table. I like the way you think. All right, you All right. possess the table in case we need to move it. I'll possess the the. Uh, let's go for the couches. Which one's closer to the uh, table? Well, the couch is what they're sitting on, so that's probably going to be the closest thing. Well, you said somebody was on the couch, somebody was on the chair. That's what I'm asking. The the chair is in the far corner of the room. It's not okay. Then yep, we're going for the couch. Okay, so I have a couple questions actually. So first of all, are we are we trying not to get caught? Uh, your entire goal is just get them out of the castle. Getting caught just means you have a chance to be injured because if they do have ma if they have magical items, that can hurt you, and you only have forty five HP. But I can also just hurt them too with like shit and just like, I mean, you, something can, I mean, you can throw out. shit at them. You can use your shot of withering touch. You can use anything at your disposal. Um, but if they do hit you with something magical, it may stun you. Okay, got it. So, element of surprise. Okay, I'm good. All, all right. right, so are you all right? So, one I'm gonna possess gonna, the table. You're all right. So, Kane, you're gonna possess the table. Purity, you're gonna possess the couch. So, yep. are you gonna just try and throw both of those people into the table? Uh, I'm going to try subtly by moving it, just to try to scare one of them off to maybe um, disbalance the the couch if we can if we can get one of them off there quick enough. Roll me a dexterity check. Is that a that's a D twenty, right? Yeah, everything I'm gonna ask you to roll except for damage is gonna be a D twenty. Okay. Um so if you look on the page, your dexterity is a plus one, so whatever you roll, plus one. Sixteen. Okay, so you are success. So what you do is you kind of do like that magic fingers vibration thing. And uh the there are two the two people that are sitting on the couch is a man and a woman. Um the man stands up 
and, and immediately point to the couch like, oh my God, what is that? Who's shaking this couch? And he's like looking around it to see if he can find anybody. His back is turned to the table. Kane, uh, I will tell you that his, the back of his legs are within your reach from the edge of the table if you would like to take advantage. Just the back of his legs? Uh, well, I mean, in terms of, like, moving on your level, uh, you can choose to do what you want. I'm just saying he is standing up now, though, and he's looking around the couch for what was causing it to shake. Okay, so hypothetically, if I wanted to, I could just, like, throw myself as the table at him. I'm going to have you roll a strength check for that. Why not just okay. pull the, his legs out from under him so that he falls uh, back onto the table? Oh, I just want to fucking smash him with a table. <laughs> okay. Right. Fine. Roll, roll it, roll it, roll a strength check and, and tell me what you get. Uh, for a ghost, your strength is going to take a minus two to the roll. It's a nine. Um, so what happens is, is you lift the table up just barely. Um, and as you as it comes back down, it makes a thud noise, which causes the man to turn around again and look at the table. But you do not get enough lift off to actually hit him. However, at this point, the person that was sitting with him, which is a woman, uh, immediately looks at him and says, Oh my god, this is scaring me so much, I must use the powder room. Uh, and then she immediately leaves. Uh, Raka, a second later, you hear the bathroom door open and there is somebody rushing to get in there uh, to use uh, use the facilities. Oh yes, Keith's time to shine. So uh, she rushes in very quickly and pulls down her frock to go take a dump at the toilet, um, and she is now uh, now sitting on you. I'm gonna make water go up her butt. <laughs> <laughs> Roll uh, dexterity for me. I think Those Keith are... has a piss kink. You, you get a you get a plus one. Boom, son. Oh damn. Oh, uh, and that's without the plus one, so that is a that is a twenty. An unnatural 20. So, yeah, so, all right, so she sits down, and as she sits down, a geyser of water shoots out of the toilet and right up her ass and throws her <laughs> off the seat. She then smashes her face into the, uh, into the, the front of the door that was, uh, that was the area where the toilet was, and she lands on the ground. Uh, she also has crapped herself because of that. Uh, she immediately pulls up her poo-covered frock and then runs out of the room. Um, Kane, a few, a few minutes, a few minutes later, because you guys are still possessing the objects in the room, the man is still looking around at the at the the couch and the table. By the way, uh, he comes and says, "She comes and says, oh my god, the, the the toilet! Something's wrong with the toilet! Please help me!'" And the the everybody in the room just kind of looks at her and and tells her to go fuck herself. <laughs> great, great communication. All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> sounds about right for a family. with my ghost hands and pull his leg over so he falls and falls on the floor. All right, you're gonna hit him in the legs and gonna make him fall on the floor. That's still good. That's uh, that's going to be a. I'm gonna say that's gonna be a dexterity roll because you're doing something. Uh, Which means you will get a plus one to that. Fuck. Ooh. God, you are right, bad so at this. You gently bump his leg, and he keeps he keeps like turning back to the table, like it's more of a nuisance to him now. <laughs> like he's like, "Fuck this stupid table." You know what? Um, Fuck it. I want to throw the the entire couch at him. You want to throw the entire couch at him? All right, you're gonna have to roll strength for that one because that's a big piece of uh, thing. Okay, that's God technically a <laughs> I got one. No, the roll. couch just the couch and the table hey. are just like vibrating and bumping people, and they really don't know what's going on. <laughs> Uh, however, the woman who is covered in feces has attracted the attention of the man who was uh, manning the fire, um, and he walks over and says that he'll check out the bathroom. So he uh, he is going to walk back in on Raka, <laughs> and he comes into the stall, Raka, with a plunger. Are we the Chihuahuas of the uh, of the ghosts here? Yeah, we're going to have to yeah. seriously pick up our slack. We need to kill some people. <laughs> like, give me that plunger. Something, something should happen soon. Um, give me the plunger. Let's me have it. Okay, he, he's, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna plunger. Uh, so I'm gonna roll strength because he's just gonna go in with that. Oh, oh god. my god! All right, he jams that plunger in there, and he's Ooh. going to town. He's going to town. Uh, so Raka, are you gonna try and do anything? Or are you just like, gonna let this happen? Toilet. What? What? Hold on. What? 
what year is it? Like, what kind of castle is this? It's not, um, let me put it, it, it think of like a medieval castle, but you're like a, a modern toilet. <laughs> oh, okay. So. You could always just take over the plunder. It, there's literally, it's not a poop shoot. It's, it's an actual toilet. Okay. Yes, it is an actual toilet just for the sake of comedy. All right, so I'm going to snatch the plunger with my ethereal ghostly powers. Okay. Uh, hang on a quick second. I just picture the toilet being like the one from Real Ghostbusters, the one with the teeth, and it's just eating the plunger now. All right, so I'm going to have you roll a dexterity check to grab that. Actually, no, scratch that. I changed my mind. I want to possess the plunger. You want to go for the toilet, the plunger? Okay, we can do that. Okay. Oh, I found the so toilet. Perfect. What is it, a demon toilet? Hold on. Uh, let me find the toy. You've never seen this toy? I I wasn't looking at what you had on screen. No, I'm going to put it in general chat. And then I'll put it on screen. That's general session rules, but... Oh, sorry, I put it in the wrong oh, spot. Oh, I, I, I have seen that. Um, th Alright, so... Raka, you've moved your uh, consciousness from the toilet to the plunger. Yeah, now I'm going to start swinging the plunger around. Just All right, so, ridiculous. Okay, so what you're going to do with this one is, because he is currently using you, I'm going to have you roll Clip a uh, constitution check, and I'm going to have you roll against him. It's just a baseline for you guys. Ooh, oh, he's yeah. probably not going to beat that. He did not beat that. Okay. So as he's, uh, as he's trying to plunge the toilet, the plunger turns around and uh, you can decide what you want to do with him. Are you just oh, going to smack like... him? Or are you oh, I'm, totally, to... I'm just going to hit him in the face with, my, with the plunger. Like... All right, you just pimp smack him right in the face. So that's going to be six damage to him. So, I'm gonna ro uh, so you can roll for that. That's 1d6. I'm going to say you did it because you beat, the, you beat his roll. So that, I'll count that as your attack roll. Raka? You said what? I said you can roll for 1d6 damage to smack when you smack this guy. I'm going to count the 17 as your attack roll. Alright, All right, that's two damage. So you pimp smacked him right in the face and he goes down on the ground and he immediately looks back and just sees like the plunger just like float down to the ground and just sit there as if it's like taunting him and he runs out of the room. Um, and back to the other area where the, where the table and the couch are still vibrating. Um, and as he walks in, uh, the, he walks in along again with the woman who is covered in feces and just goes, The toilet is haunted. She is right. It possessed the plunger and smacked me in the face. It was terrible. It was horrible. We must destroy the toilet if we are ever to get out of here alive. The toilet's the uh, only thing stopping you guys. Yes. Oh, yeah, actually. So, um, he, he proceeds to go over and get the fire poker, um, and the woman who was in the corner, or sorry, the woman that was covered in feces is going to join in on this as well. She's going to go back to the, back there and try and beat the shit out of something. Uh, so he, he has the fire poker, and she grabbed, like, uh, basically, like, a, uh, a heavy, like, pot type thing. Um, and they're gonna, they're gonna go back there, so they both leave the room to go back to the toilet. Now, Kane and Purity, what are you guys gonna do? I mean, we're not having much luck with our stuff, but do you wanna try again to beat the shit out of him, is what we are? You, you yeah, do have other abilities way. outside of just possessing things. I know, we'll but it's you know. fun. You can also possess anything else in the room. Yeah, I was about to say, I think I'm gonna switch. What else is in the room? What is smaller in the room? Uh, there is that cabinet that is full of miniatures. It has a couple of miniature knights and a miniature dragon. Oh, I have okay, an idea. If we can get him to come over to there, one of us can drop the whole cabinet on him. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna have him come over and just like smack the shit out of him with the cabinet like door. But oh, I, yeah, that that's a good idea too. <laughs> you wanna, you want me to be miniatures and start throwing them at him? Yeah, I'll be the cabinet door. Okay. Or I guess I'll just be the cabinet. Really. Why am I getting your rolls tonight? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so I'm well, I mean, to be fair, I'm just throwing a bunch of miniatures. Do I need to roll high for this? 
Uh, if you're just throw, I'll say you throw it's, the knight miniatures at him. You don't, you don't throw the dragon one because that's yeah, a no, bigger. just the small ones just to annoy him enough to come over. Wow, <laughs> it's enough yeah. to open the door. You open yeah. the door so that they can fly out. That's I wasn't actually going to make you roll for that one. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the, so the door to the cabinet opens, and again, this guy is just kind of examining this table and this couch, and he has his back turned to this to his cabinet, and the knights actually fly out. And hit him in the back, and he sort of turns around and looks at the cabinet and sees that the door is flung wide open. He's like, huh? And then he proceeds to go and grab the knights, and he goes up to the front of the cabinet to put them back inside. You're just fucking with this guy. Yeah, it's fun. We're the annoying ghosts. He deserves it, to be fair. Yeah. He didn't wipe his feet when he came into the castle. Technically, none of them did. They're all dicks. Yeah, they're all getting the what they deserve. Yes. Okay, so can I roll to try to push the entire thing on him? Yes, that'll be a strength roll. Oh! oh. He's gonna have a bad time. Okay. How, how, how do you want to do this? Because uh, are, you, are you just gonna just gonna flop it right over on him? Yep. Okay. So purity, as Cartoon he style. walks up, as he walks up, he's putting the uh, he's putting the miniatures back inside the cabinet, and as this happens, the cabinet almost like almost like it was mechanical in nature, just flops down on him, not with like the force of gravity, but like the force of something unseen pushing it down at him, and because the front of the cabinet is all glass, it immediately shatters, and he is just stabbed with all of these glass shards that are now going through various parts of his body. Um, I want you to roll um, 3d10 for damage. Hello? Alright, I got it. No, Did I do it right? Out, who dropped out and came back in? Oh. That was me, sorry. It was being weird. Oh, no, you're good. Yes, that is Kane's correct. Kane's computer's all right. a piece of shit. Alright, so... Lick my balls. I, I know. <laughs> Lick my ghost um, balls. <laughs> possess that also, Acer. Kane's using it. will make it run better. Oh, God. <laughs> um, so, Purity, yes, that is correct. Uh, so, you did 13 damage. So, that guy's dead. Um, now, that guest, uh, his name was uh, John. And unfortunately, uh, John was the son of uh, former Baron Delnor, who was a guard, but he was skimming off the top when it came to parking ticket. So I mean, I still didn't wipe his feet. Dead. He is now dead. However, the other two people in the room, which were the two women that were in the room, immediately freak the fuck out and run <laughs> out. So there is nobody left in this room. They are they are losing their minds. They're going to find the two people that went to go kill the toilet. Um, <laughs> high five to Kane. <laughs> You, you, do your go. Go, you do your ghost high fives as the. All as right, the so I'm dies. going to depossess the plunger and just okay. kind of float around for now. <laughs> okay, just walk so them beating the gonna, shit out of a toilet. <laughs> you're you're going to stay in the bathroom, I assume, though, correct? Yeah, I'm just going to okay. hang out. I'm not going to possess nothing. Okay, so you don't do anything. So those two come in again, the, the guy who got smacked by the plunger and the chick that's covered in crap. And they come up, and immediately he uses the uh, fire poker to break the uh, to break the plunger. And after breaking the plunger, uh, she just begins. They just begin smashing the toilet. And I'm gonna roll two d20s to see how bad they actually get the toilet. Oh wow! Okay, so the guy rolled a 16. She rolled a two. So she just like keeps hitting it with that like pot thing, but it's not really doing much. And the pot eventually just breaks. And you can't do something to it. Him with that fire poker though. He's beating the shit out of that thing. He shatters the tank. He he shatters the uh, a, a lot of like the the bowl itself. So there's only like a little like jagged cup thing like sitting there. Uh, and then after he's done, he just kind of stops and he's just like breathing heavily over. It. He's like, it's finally over. It's fine. So yeah, you just watch those two people destroy a toilet. <laughs> um, are you gonna do anything? You're just gonna keep watching them. I'm just going to keep watching them. Okay. Uh, and we're going to go back to Kane and uh, Purity. So where do you guys want to go now? But keep in mind, there are three floors to the castle. There is an upstairs and a downstairs. Where do you want to go next? 
Hmm. Hmm. Let's go. What's where are most of the people currently? Are they still all in this room? Um. There's two in the bathroom that just destroyed the toilet. There's the other two that just ran out of here after you killed that guy. So we don't have to worry um, about them though. Um, or did they just leave this room. They left that room. So uh-huh. they're they're somewhere else in the castle. They haven't completely left yet. They're not that freaked out. Well, let's go get the ones that have been slightly freaked out then. I'm going to go find my ghostly compadres and tell them how I just made these people kill their toilet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, you do that. You meet up with them and you tell them the story That's about how you just shit. tricked these idiots into destroying their only means of safe defecation. They got um, no place to Out of an now, entire bro. castle, there was only one toilet? Right, who is the architect of this place? <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't a very intelligently constructed castle. Um, wow, I, we just well, killed someone. You're more th- evil than we are. They're going to shit in the from now on. He's going to have to shit in the sink from now on. <laughs> and then spray it down the drain. Yep. Hopefully um, he eats his corn properly and chews his food. Would be nice. Um, Alright, so you meet back up with them as those other... The, cause the, and what happens is after everything's all said, the four people... Uh, the two that killed the toilet and the two that were scared shitless uh, immediately come to you, and they, they the, the two that were scared immediately explain that the other man who was in the other room is now dead. Um, and they need to uh, they need to get the fuck out. They need to get the fuck someplace safer than where they were because something is happening, and they don't know what. So we those should follow them and listen. Men- you can do that, and there's also, again, there's other areas in the castle you can explore if you want to try and find anybody else who may be, uh, may, might be off by themselves. I'm going to the kitchen. All right, you go, you're going to the kitchen. Uh, are you guys going to follow him, or are you going to go your own way? Hmm. Why not? Free show, right, let's go, follow. All right, so you guys are going to all go to the kitchen. So you go into the kitchen, and the kitchen is kind of basic. You have your uh, you have your like stoves and stuff that are in there. You have a lot of pots and pans. There is a fair amount of cutlery as well, um, and you also notice that there appears to be you know cutting boards and other various normal types of kitchen utensils. Is there anybody in here? No. Uh, I'm gonna head to the library then. Uh, the library. Okay, so if you're going to the library. That's basically going to be, uh, that's going to be uh, on this floor, so you can go to the library. So as you as you phase through the wall in the library, uh, you see that there is somebody going through books. Uh, a man, he's he's looking through a bunch of books and then placing them back on the shelf. It looks like he's flipping through them very quickly. Oh, this is going to be fun! I want to possess one of the shelves behind him and just start yeeting books at him. Okay, you can possess the shelf. It'll be a dexterity roll to uh, fire the books out at him. Our dexterity is... Uh, it should be a plus one, so that would be a 16. Yeah. Is that the, the 15? Is that what you just rolled? Yep. Yeah, so that would be a 16 because it's a plus one. So yes, you are able to do that. Uh, so you possess the shelf... And his back is turned to you for a second until you, you put an Encyclopedia uh, Britannica right in between his two shoulder blades. Uh, then he turns around and the, you, books just start firing out of, the, uh, out of the bookshelf like a Gatling gun, just going back and forth, back and forth. And he's, <laughs> like, he's kind of like crouching, like hiding from the books. That's going to do 1d4 damage to him, uh, which is the little uh, triangular one that's in the corner if you want to roll that. Oh, four. Okay, yeah, so you got him good. He's he's pretty bloody, but he's he's running out of that room. He's freaking out. Woohoo! Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send one last one out the door, Adam. Just get him in the back of the head if I can. Roll, roll dexterity for that one. Even if it misses... Oh, I did not aim properly. Hold on. Okay, 17. That's plus one 17. That will hit. Uh, that's an additional uh, 1d4 because you're aiming at his head. That will also crit. The book also says how not to be a pussy on it. I, I, I will go with that. All right, so that's another four damage. So you whack him in the back of the head. That actually knocked him unconscious. So he's not dead, but he's just kind of lying on the ground now. Uh, he doesn't, he's, uh, he's just sort of like lying there and like drooling into the carpet. All right, I'm going to go pop quickly back into the kitchen and go, hey guys, I just knocked one out if you want to take him over. 
Uh, you actually wouldn't have to require a roll for that one because he is unconscious. He just doesn't have a whole lot of health. I know. I'm just letting them know that. I know. I'm just telling them they don't have to. If they did, if anybody did want to possess him, you wouldn't have to roll because he's knocked out. No, I want to possess the chef. <laughs> there I'm is excited. no chef. All, all of the uh, all I'll of the, the guy. staff are gone. Wait, what? The staff's gone. They're not there for that evening because it's only the people that are supposed to stay in the house for the night. All right, well, then, where's the, where are the children? Uh, no kids are in, are in the, they're all adults. You are, said that so confidently. I yeah. wanted to possess one of the kids. Creepy kids always make for good horror. All right, here's what I'll give you. Roll me a perception check, just a straight perception check. I think it would just be just a d20. Nope. No kids. No, that was for something else. Um, <laughs> oh, no. So it was going to be uh, the level of shit that you were going to be able to possess. So you did notice when you were in the previous room that there was a teddy bear. Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna go possess the teddy bear? Absolutely. fucking loot. All you right, you are you are now Teddy Ruxpin. You are now, you're starting in the gallery, so there's nobody. Uh, well, the place where the guy was stabbed to death with all the glass, thanks to purity rolling in that twenty. Uh, so you're in that room right now, which doesn't have anybody in it. All right. Well, I'm gonna go find. I'm just gonna walk around as this teddy bear till I find a room with people in it. Okay, you okay. can take over Actually, the body if you want. No, I'm gonna go back in the kitchen as the teddy I'm bear. I'm gonna take over the body. Okay, Kane, you're going to go take over. All right, so Rocky, you're going to go back in the kitchen. Kane, you're going to take over the unconscious body. So what happens is, is uh, Kane, you go up to him and you enter through his rear. Um, but you, <laughs> oh, you, yeah. enter, you enter into his body and you take control of him and you're able to stand back up. And then now keep in mind, you are no longer incorporeal and you're going to have to, uh, if you don't blend in enough with the others, they're going to kind of question what's wrong with you, basically. So you may have to roll constitution saves every once in a while to make sure you maintain the visit. Uh, but you are able to move around. You currently only have two health. Sorry, two I health. hit you with so many books. God damn. The extra okay. one was what did it. <laughs> well, you know, it's not my body if it dies. So, you know, that is true. Good. And if it does die, then you just return to your normal ghost. Yeah. Um, all right, so you have possessed it so... Uh, Rocker, what are you going to do in the kitchen as the teddy bear? Are you going to, like, grab a knife or something? Yes. Okay. You, and a vegetable you, not... peeler. Why a vegetable <laughs> peeler? Because <laughs> he's a sick fuck. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, I'll say that because it's a kitchen, yeah, you find a vegetable peeler and you do find a knife as well. Uh, so you're going to go find him. So, Rocka, I want you to roll a d20 and see how fast you... Uh, God, you it's come... like... Uh... Everybody loves, uh, Benny loves you. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, God. All right. Raka, I'm going to, I'm going to give you this one. I'm going to give you this one that's going to be real fun for you. So you wander into the basement and in the back of the basement, you find like a bald dude who's in like old fashioned, like brown tunic. And he's kind of just, like, down there, like, fucking around with shit. He's just kind of like a weirdo. But he's in a room that's full of, I guess what you would call them would be torture implements. Uh, you have whips. You have a lot of spiky things. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of uh, various types of torture devices, like an Iron Maiden and a guillotine. Wait, where is this now? You've wandered into the basement. You wandered into, into the, the sex into, dungeon. Into the, into the undercroft. And there is a torture chamber down there. And there is a man in the torture chamber who's just kind of like wandering about. Has he noticed the teddy bear? Um, I'm going to roll for that. You should have kept quiet. I'm going to say no. Because All you right, have so, kind of a size advantage, so I'm going to say that's a minus two anyway. So no, he does not notice you. I'm going to go on the bed. Okay, you jump up on the bed near him. Then I'm going to hide my knife and vegetable peeler behind my back and then just lay there like I'm a normal okay. teddy bear. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll to see how long it takes him to notice you. 
Not very, not uh, not terribly long. So he's fiddling around with something for a few minutes, and then he looks on the bed and he sees that there's a teddy bear that suddenly got next. Oh look, a teddy bear! I haven't seen a teddy bear in so long. Hi, little teddy bear. And he kind of just he pokes your stomach like the Pillsbury Doughboy. I do nothing. Okay. Um, he's then going to pick you up. So he kind of grabs you with both of his hands and picks you up. Now I'm going to stab him Chucky style. All right. Roll, uh, roll for attack. I'm going to say your atta base attack bonus is a plus five. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's 21. That's going to hit. All right. So the knife is going to be one is going to be one uh, D six plus one. And the potato peeler is going to be an additional 1d4. Porter Roy, blood sports. <laughs> you just possess a teddy bear and just killing people with a fucking potato peeler. I mean, I'm not Kicking surprised. little legs. What, what do I roll for damage? Uh, it's 1d6 plus 1 for the knife and 1d4 for the potato peeler. This is so fucking ridiculous. There's the... Alright. Well, that'll be the plus one. You also have 1d6 to roll for the knife. Oh! Yeah, nope. Okay, so... um, How do you want to do this? He's dead. I wonder, can we take over body. dead bodies? Yes, we can. Yes, you are allowed to take over corpses. However, um, it's more of a... Once rigor mortis starts to set in, uh, it might not be the most uh, pleasant place to be. So uh, you take your knife and your potato peeler and you, you stab him repeatedly as you're also peeling the skin off of his face with the potato peeler. Um, and after a, a few moments of struggling and screaming and gurgling, he falls over on the ground and dies, bleeding from his neck. Um, as he, he passes away, <laughs> as his as he passes away, you then possess his corpse, and he stands up. However, again, he does have a fairly straight, eviscerated neck, and he's missing missing patches of skin on his face because of your potato peeler. Just go get a scarf; it'll be fine. All right, so Raka, you 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 found your little holy girl there. So Kane uh, or Purity, what are you gonna do? Because Kane just went and possessed that. Yeah, body. I'm following Kane around because this is gonna be interesting. Okay, you're gonna follow him around. So Kane, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna go to where I can find the most people. All right, roll a d20 and see where you can find. You're just gonna be kind of randomly searching. Oh, can you, yeah, Kane two. can still see me even if I'm incorporeal, right? Uh, Kane knows that you're there. Uh, he can't see you through the human eyes, but yeah, he knows that you're there. Through, okay, like, good. If you let me know when you want me to do something, he can yeah. also hear you. Um, so all right, so Kane, uh, I'm gonna have you wander into what looks like a trophy. Um, it's a room that has like a animal heads mounted on the walls and all this other stuff, and you see, you know, various animals, you know, uh, elk, uh, Leopard, bear, antelope, deer, uh, hogs, like shit like that. You have a bunch of crap that's on the walls. And it appears there is one person in the room, and he looks like he's he's searching through all of the different animal busts. Uh, he's, he's looking in the mouths. He's taking them off the wall and looking behind them. He's searching for something. He's totally looking for treasure. I'm going to go over and whisper to him, he's totally looking for treasure. Kane. Did Kane get that shit out? Kane died. Kane, are you there? Oh, ironic. He, he had a heart attack eating some linguine. God damn it. <laughs> Little fucking teddy bear. Kane, I'm just buddy, gonna start poking can... him until he moves. Kane, if you, if you can hear me, dump out and come back in because we can't hear you through Discord. Let me tell him. Oh, now I now I I just heard you a second ago, Kane. Yeah. There oh, you there are. you are. Okay. 
Okay. So um, you rolled. Uh, so you rolled a six. So what I was going to have you do is you went into this room that I call the trophy room, which is it has all these animal heads that are mounted on the wall. There's there's bears, there's antelopes, mm -hmm. uh, there's hogs, there's panthers, deer, and stuff like that. There's a bunch of different things that are just mounted on the walls. And uh, there's somebody that looks like they're searching through the various busts to look for something that's either inside them or on the back of them. He's taking them off the wall and looking behind them. He's looking in their mouths and stuff. Um, so what do you want to do? Again, you are possessing a person, so if you just walk in there uh, without a stealth roll, they're going to be able to know that you're there. I'm but totally going to fly over I'm to Kane and go, there, he's totally looking for treasure. I'm, a, I'm just going to, like, scare the guy, but I'm going to be, like, a, along the lines of, be like, hey, buddy, how's it going? He turns around, what do you want? Well, I figured in a scary place like this, it'd be better for us to just stick together. Get away from me. Go deal with those other morons that are down the stairs staring at the fire. Oh, well, is his, he... uh, which, which bus are he near really quick? Uh, the one that he's examining right now looks to be a, uh, looks to be the hog one. He's looking Ooh, around the back. I'm gonna whisper to Kane, get him to put his hand in there and then I'm gonna go possess it. You know, I heard that there's some really good stuff inside of that. Really? What just, did you hear? Uh, I honestly don't know. I heard the other day, just before we got here, there was two people talking, that girl and their husband, talking about how there's some rare valuables hidden throughout this house. Hmm. Seems that maybe some information I thought was privileged was disseminated, unfortunately, to the rest of Riff Raff. Well, if you're going to ask questions, one of these busts is home to a nice, nice treasure of 2,000 gold. It's in a nice bag that's buried inside of it. In addition to that, there's also priceless gems, various ones. Of it. it was a good hiding spot for him because, eh, well, most people aren't going to look inside of a bear head. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. All right, so yeah, stop, now stop uh, what sticking, I want to do. Stop sticking your hands in things. You're the one sticking your hands in things. You know what? I don't have to take this. I'm going to die right now. All right, I'm going to leave his body. <laughs> well, he's not, he's not dead. He still has two health left. He's just unconscious. And so he'll still be unconscious. Right. He'll still be so, unconscious. So he'll think he'll he died. Fall to the floor. Yeah. Uh, well, he, oh, actually, is there a fire in that room? There is not a fire in that room. What no, 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 get him to think, get to him to room. think the guy panic because when he, when he goes down to check him, I can have the head jump down and bite the guy's ass. <laughs> okay. I like the idea. Okay, so you immediately unpossess this guy, and he just collapses to the ground immediately and falls down, and the person, the, the man who was looking through the, uh, the different animal bus is kind of shocked by this. He's like, oh my god, he dropped to the floor. So he, he goes up to him and begins, he checks your, his pulse, he can feel that his pulse is still there, and he can tell that he's breathing, but he just doesn't know what happened. Do I need to, do I, what do I need to roll for the, for the thing to jump off the wall uh, and bite his ass? If you're going to have it jump off the wall and bite his ass, I'm going to say that's going to be a dexterity. Oh. Oh, all right, that's a plus one, too, so that's an 18. So, yeah, all right. So, which animal bus do you want to jump off the wall? Uh, the pig one. Zoo okay. All right. So, the boar head hops off the wall, opens its mouth, and chomps down directly into his ass. <laughs> and that's going to do 1d6 damage. Ooh, that's a, yeah, that, that's a hefty one. So, yeah, so those tusks just go right into his butt cheek. <laughs> and that thing is in there. That thing, that thing is in there, and it's just kind of stuck on his butt. And he starts freaking out. Oh, oh, oh god! Get it off me! Get it off me! Get it off! Oh god, my ass! All right, uh, I am now going to repossess the guy's body and get up. Okay, you do that. <laughs> oh man, what happened? Oh, this thing came off the wall. Oh god, it's in my ass. Oh, wow, that's really <laughs> in there. Why is it oinking? <laughs> I don't know. You what must have made it really like. happy. 
<laughs> it's dead. It's mounted on a wall. It's a head. Get it off. I'm going to uh, jump into we're... something else, like one of the tiger heads, and just have it start growling. And then slowly jump from, like, one to one to have it making noise just to scare the shit out of this poor guy. I, I want you to roll a charisma check for that. And you are a ghost, which means your charisma is actually very high. Uh, your charisma is a plus three, so. Well, solid nine. Uh, so that's going to be a 12. So I'm going to say you do it somewhat effectively. So you jump in between the various animals and they start coming to life and he's he's freaking the fuck out now. <laughs> he's he's borderline losing his mind because he just got his ass bitten by a, a fucking boar's head. And he doesn't know what's going on but it, like all the animals are coming to life. This is like his worst nightmare. And he's just like freaking out and Kane's just kind of just standing there watching <laughs> this happen. Uh, Kane, you gotta, man, you gotta pretend you're a little bit scared so he doesn't catch on. I'm just gonna scream and run out. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. You do that. You just scream a bloody murder at the top of your lungs and run out of the room. He then does the same, although he's more or less like limping out of the room because he can't like get away from the sitting position because of the way that the board is attached to his ass. Um. All right. So that's that room. So Rocco, what are you gonna do now? You uh you are in the basement. Um, but you have killed the guy that was down there. Uh, and now, now you have possessed his body. So where are you taking his body? To where the other ghost homies are. All right, you're going to go up there. So you're going to meet them in the middle. So you're actually going to run into the guy that has the boar stuck to his ass. Uh, <laughs> wait. Oh, I got the perfect joke for this. All right. So as he's running through, uh, so he's coming towards you right now. And. I'm going to roll uh, for his perception to see if he notices that uh, the thing that, that half my face is peeled off. Yeah, exactly. He does not because he is too busy trying to smack the uh, the boar head off of his ass. So he just kind of runs like uh, you're in the middle of the hallway. So he's probably going to run into you unless you move. No, oh, run into me. I'm a ghost, bro. I'm okay. okay. All right. He's going to oh, no, run into you. You're not a ghost. You have, you're in somebody's body, remember? Yeah, the body's gonna die, not me. Well, the body's already dead. Exactly. Um, so he runs into into you, and because you're a zombie, basically, uh, you just kind of fall over and flop down on the ground, and he starts getting really angry. He, like, pushes himself up after a second after he falls in. You, you oh, why did you get in front of me? And, why did you, and then he looks up at your face and goes, Neh! and he just sees that your your throat is, like, sliced open, and you're just missing chunks of your face from the potato peeler, and he's now thoroughly freaked out. He is bolting his way for the fucking door. He I'm is just gonna gone. chase him. Excuse me, sir, I believe I need stitches. <laughs> <laughs> um, since most of uh, that guy's voice, co voice uh, vocal cords were sliced open, uh, it comes out more or less like <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he runs shitless out of the house. So that one has left. You Woo! drove him insane pretty quickly. Uh, and two of them are dead. We are going good. <laughs> Go to the radio and put on Thriller. Thriller! I'm going to say that you do this just because... Uh, no, you, you know what I'm going to have you have this happen is, Raka, I want you to roll... Um, I want you to roll a d20, but this is essentially going to be a performance check. Oh my god. This is going to be stupid. You rolled a nat 20. For turning on a radio. Oh, the radio is going to become a monster, isn't it? No. No, 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 no. When the so bard, like, cross-classes in the necromancy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is what happens. So, uh, Raka, what you do is you walk into the room that has the four people in it. Um, the, the four, the, the two that destroyed the toilet and the other two that were freaking out. And you immediately pull out this little, like, magic box with a speaker on it. And you put it on the ground. You tap the top of it, and it begins playing. It starts playing the Thriller tune. And after a second, Kane comes in as his two 
HP character that's still sort of alive, but also fucked up. And then the two corp, the other corpse also comes in from the other one, the one that, the one that's embedded with a bunch of glass. And all three of you together just begin doing the thriller dance. And the people, the, the other four people that are there are horrified. So there's the one man and the three women. And the three women are all kind of like huddled behind the one guy who has the fire poker. And he is uh, he is terrified at the moment because you guys are just doing that like thriller dance thing where you're like cocking your head to the side like repeatedly and just doing the moonwalk back and forth and you have no idea what's going on. Hey Kane, it's close yeah. to midnight. Oh, is it? Something evil is lurking in the dark. All right, well, <laughs> all right I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna look at all the people. I'm gonna be like, guys, guys, calm down. What do you mean, calm down? They're fucking, they're fucking down dead, man. What are you talking about? He's got, guy, that guy's dead. He's got glass in his face and he's dancing. That guy oh, doesn't have a throat. Oh, shit, I didn't realize that. I do have a throat. It's right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys, guys. Before we go. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Oh, God. Hang on a second. Do you have the ability to give people nightmares? I don't think so. I'm just trying to spook no, people. Not. He's got horrifying um, visage. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start running at them, and then I'm gonna exit the guy's body. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna give him momentum, and then you're gonna leave his body. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna send his body he careening towards them. Okay, I want you to roll a strength check, but because you're in that body, you're not gonna take the same minuses would just rank that you would if you were outside the body. So it's just going to be a straight D20 roll. Okay, I'm going to say that's enough. Uh, so, all right, so you you begin running towards this group of four people who are kind of just huddled, and you dive forward, and as you dive, you leave this, this man's body, and uh, he's going to roll, and I'm going to roll to see how bad this goes. Hopefully terribly. Ooh, that's a six. That means this is going to go probably pretty bad for them. Um, so the body rolls and just immediately impacts all four of them. Uh, so the guy, the the guy in the front though, with the uh, fire poker, is going to stab the body as it's coming towards him to try and stop it. So I'm going to roll one d six to see how much damage that does. That might kill that unconscious guy. It does kill that unconscious guy. Yeah. Uh, so he is dead, and the fire poker is impaled in him, so the guy ain't getting that back. And then he kind of just, like, falls on him, and then that guy falls back into the three women, and they all kind of get, get pinned under him. Now, they didn't really take any damage, but he did kill that guy. So that's another, that's four now, out of ten. Um, yeah. And now, uh, so now it's, uh, Kane, you are now back in ghost form. Purity, you are also in ghost form. And Rocky, you are still inhabiting the uh, semi-decapitated corpse of Uncle Fester. Oh, I'm going to go straight up, like, walk Uncle Fester into the fireplace. <laughs> and then <just> sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, okay. it fits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excuse me. You okay? So, so is outro. All right, so you got. All right, so you're gonna walk into the fire. Okay, so you can do that. There is a fireplace in this room, so you go and you you kind of just put both your hands in. It's kind of like you know rubbing on like sunscreen. You as your hands catch on fire, you're just kind of rubbing it all over your face, and the body is slowly like melting away. Like the clothes are on fire, and you, and you can see the skin like starting to boil and start to just like liquefy as he's like walking, and you're just walking towards these people as your body is emulating. Um, so they are all incredibly horrified by what they're fucking watching. Uh, you have, you have made a horror movie scene if there ever was one. Uh, are you going to actually try and let, light them on fire? Or are you just going to freak them fuck out? Oh, no, I'm not going to try to light them on fire. That's too much work. I'm going to go do something. I'm going to go possess something else. Okay. So I'm going to roll for their sanities, all four of them. If they roll be anywhere below a seven, they're going to run out of the fucking Oh my god. Okay, so there the guy is the one that rolled the nat 20. All the women run the fuck out. <laughs> oh, unholy god. I need more water. Hang on a second. Um all right, so the three women that were with the guy immediately book it out the front door. They are done with this. They are not doing any of these shenanigans. 
However, the guy is uh, still very much adamant about attempting to uh, to continue the fight. And basically, he realizes he can't get the fire poker out, so he decides he's just going to run upstairs and hide somewhere. So he immediately books it for the uh, he immediately books it for the stairs. Um, now, again, at the same time, Purity and Kane, you guys are both still uh, messing around. Kane, you have already used your human possession, so you can't use it again. Can I possess the fire poker? Uh, yes, but you will also have to rip it out of the guy that it's in, which will be a strength roll after you possess it. No, that's fine. Let's do that then. Okay. Roll your strength check to force it out of the guy's body. Nice. All right, that's also going to be a minus two because your strength is a ghost. Um, so I'm going to say you actually do get it out because that guy wasn't very muscular to begin with. So yeah, so the fire poker is just kind of there and it's like floating. Okay. Well, I am going to stick to the ceiling, so hopefully nobody can see me. I'm going to move quietly to the other room. Okay. Uh, you're going to do that. Purity, what are you going to do? Uh... Keep, keep in mind, nobody is checked upstairs. I guess I'll head upstairs. I didn't zone okay. out earlier. <laughs> uh, keep in mind... Okay, so you're going to go upstairs. Raka, you're just going to walk around on fire. No, I was going to... I'm, I'm in my ghost form now. I was just going to leave the body in there. Okay, you leave the body in there, and it just kind of, like, you know, lights on fire and smolders yep. there on the floor for a while. Uh, are you going to go upstairs with Purity, or are you going to uh, putz around with Kane? I'm going to putz gonna around go with away? Kane. All right, you're going to go with Kane. So uh, I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, so, Kane, again, where are you heading uh, as, the, as the fire poker? I'm going to try and just find somebody. Hopefully somebody by themselves. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do is... Um, so that's... Oh, I have an cool. awful fucking idea. Is there um, is there a suit of armor anywhere? Uh, upstairs there is one in the hallway. Yeah, I am immediately gonna possess that thing and go looking for someone. Do it. Chris. Marking off all the. So, but so far, I'm pretty sure we've gotten there was a guy with the glass, the three women that just ran out, dude that ran out, a investor. That's six. So that means there are four remaining. Yeah. Okay. That worked. All right. Um, all right. So, uh, Kane, what I want you to do is oh, no, actually, no, Purity, you're, you said you wanted to possess the suit of armor. Yes. So you can possess that, so you're fine. So you can, you can move around in them. Um, it, the suit of armor uh, does have a, a uh, short sword that it's holding. All right. Perfect. I'm going to start walking around the hallway looking for people. Okay, I'm going to have you roll a d20 to see if you find anybody. There are uh, four bedrooms that are upstairs. Fine. Okay, that's a 12, uh, so that's going to be a straight 20 roll. So, all right, so you uh, start walking around, and again, you're kind of clanking because it's a, it's a suit of armor, and you see a door uh, open very, very slightly and then close again almost immediately after kind of like just like a quick like look and then duck back inside, and the door is shut, uh, but you do know which one it is. It looks like it's coming from bedroom number three. Perfect. I'm going to stand next to the door and be completely silent. And just go back into quote unquote statue mode while I wait for them to open it again. Okay. Uh, so while that's happening, I'm going to go downstairs to Kane. Kane, I want you to roll to see if you can find somebody. You rolled a one. You did not find anybody. Uh, Purity, we're going to go back to you. Um, <laughs> all right, so, all right. So I'm going to roll for the guy in the room to see how long he decides he wants to stick around. It. All right. So it's a 15. So he's. He's going to wait a good long while. He's going to wait probably about 20 minutes of just dead silence before he finally starts to peek his way out of the door. And he looks around quickly. He does see your armor, but there's a couple other suits of armor that are also in the hallway. So he walks out uh, in front of you. I'm going to tap him on the shoulder once he has his back to me. And then I'm going to take right. off my helmet so there's nothing there. Okay, uh, so roll... 
Uh, I'm going to have you roll dexterity to tap him on the shoulder. Okay, that, that's plenty. You do do that. All right, so you tap him on the shoulder, and then as he's turning around, you, you he looks as the suit of armor removes its helmet, and he sees that there is nothing inside of it. I'm going to roll for his sanity. <laughs> okay, Son I'm of a fuck! It, it rolled on its side. I'm not counting that. That's a nine. So he's not he's not uh, freaked out enough to leave the castle, but he's freaked out enough to immediately try to bolt back in the room. That's fine. I'm going through the wall to follow him. Outside of the armor, of course. Okay. All right. So he, he ducks back in the room and slams the door. As you uh, disengage from the armor, it immediately collapses to the ground in a heap of metal, and you pass back through the wall. Um, he hears the armor collapse, but he's not going anywhere near that door at this point. He's locked that, and he's kind of just hiding in the corner behind the bed. Hmm. What's in the bedroom? Uh, as far as things that are in the bedroom, uh, this looks like mainly a women's bedroom. Um, there's a bed with you know the the large bed post. Oh, is there one of those walk. mannequins, like the the dress, the costume mannequins, like the dress mannequins? There is. I am totally gonna possess that and have it move around the room like it's dancing. Okay, I want you to possess it, and I want you to roll a charisma check. It is a plus three. Damn it. Right, that's an 11. So you do move it around in a very clunky sort of dancey way, but I'm going to roll for him because he's he's going to notice this and it's going to be <laughs> kind of a fight or flight response type thing. All right. That is, uh, that is not a great response from him. So he immediately goes over and tries to open the door, but he keeps like dropping the key. He's definitely freaking the fuck out at this point. Uh, his sanity is not great. You are you are immediately scaring the living fuck out of him. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna jump out it. of the mannequin and take over the key and have it fly into the air where he can't reach it. Okay. Uh, so you leave the mannequin. The mannequin then immediately flops to the ground, and uh, you possess the key. Now roll dexterity to get it all the way up to the ceiling so he can't grab it. He's gonna try and grab it. Okay, that doesn't work. So as the key lifts up a little bit, he immediately grabs it and shoves it in the lock on the door, unlocks the door, and then runs out. Uh, however, he's not... It looks like he's running downstairs, um, and he's not running into one of the other bedrooms. He's going making a beeline for the stairwell. I'll uh, follow him to make sure he tries to... I'm going to try to chase him outside. So I'm going to, like... Can I possess, like, the knight, the armor as he passes to make it jangle to the, scare him more? The only problem with possessing the armor right now is the armor has fallen apart. Yeah, but the other armor. You said there was other armor. There are other armors in, in the hallway, yes. If you want to possess one of those and try and follow them out, you can. All right. Yeah, uh, I'll do that. I was actually going to just have them move every time he passes one to try to freak him out more. Uh, there's only two other ones in the oh, hallway. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, no, no. I'm just going to go chasing him as the armor again. Okay, you possess the armor and you begin chasing him. Roll me a uh, strength check to see how fast you can chase after this guy. Ooh. That's all right, fine. So this, That'll scare all right, him. So this, all right, so this is what happens. So you, he gets to the stairs, and he starts running down the stairs. As this happens, you, he just looks behind him and sees a suit of armor miss the first step completely and then fall down the stairs. And as it hits the first step, it immediately separates into its individual pieces and careens its way down the stairs. Uh, you are still possessing the helmet, although the rest of it is kind of scattered at this point. Whee! So he, he's immediately running past all that. Now I'm going to go back to Kane. Kane, roll again to see if you can find somebody. Okie dokie. Probably not, though, considering how it's been going. Oh, thank oh, God. Oh, that's a nat 20. You definitely found somebody. Okay, so you go up to... Uh, so this is, what, this is what happened. Is uh, you've made your way upstairs through a different staircase. There's a couple of staircases to go upstairs, and you found your way into the master bedroom. And the master bedroom uh, appears to have a woman who is sort of looking around the room. She's going through some of the the chests and the uh, the nightstands and stuff, and she's looking for something. You don't know what. Um, okay. And again, you are the fire poker, Raka. You are also there. So what's around me? Uh, as far as things in the room, uh, you see that there's a uh, a whole, like, you know, there's a beauty mirror and, like, a makeup station. It's like a women's bedroom. So there's a, a, a or the part of it is, anyway. It's a kind of a his-hers thing. 
Uh, so there's a, like a makeup station with a bunch of different, you know, makeup and stuff there and a vanity mirror and all that shit. Um, on the other side, you see that it appears that there is a wall mounted on the wall. It appears to be an axe. Um, there is also a, what looks like a firearm that is sticking out of one of the, uh, it, it, because all, this woman has been going through all of these end tables, uh, there is one with look, what looks like the handle of a pistol sticking out of it. Um, you also see that there appears to be a few rather nice rugs on the floor, a little area rug type things. There's a bed, obviously. Um, there's a sh small shelf of books. Uh, there's also what looks like maybe a crystal ball or at least a ball that is made out of crystal um and that's about it i'm going to withering touch the floor she's standing on okay and the effect of that would be that the floor would disintegrate correct well it's just necrotic damage so just destroy the floor right Okay, so that's 4d6 plus 3. All right, so I'm not going to make you roll um, to hit that because you're just touching an inanimate object. Um, so I'm going to have you roll the damage instead. Roll 4d6 plus 3. Ooh, 17 plus, and that's also with the plus 3, so... Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna roll for her to see if she notices this before it actually does happen. I doubt she no, she does not. Okay. This is going to be funny. All right, so Raka, so you touch the ground right below where she's standing. Again, she's not really paying attention to it because she's going through these drawers. And after a second, um, the floor under her immediately disintegrates. And there's just a straight line from her down into the, the main entranceway. And the hole in the floor is wide enough where she sort of falls through it. I'm going to roll one more d20 to see if she can grab onto the ledge before she falls through it, inevitably down to her fate. All right, she does grab the edge, but she's hanging on for dear life. She's grabbing the edge. Her feet are dangling below as she's trying to pull herself back up. Okay, uh, Kate, what I want to do now is I want to stab her hand with the fire poker. All right, roll dexterity to do that. Okay, dokie. Supposed that. to scare them out. Oh my god! Oh, most god. of them. All right, so uh, you actually completely miss her, and instead of stabbing her hand, you fly across the room, and instead you stabbed a painting. Uh, but you also got the fire poker stuck in the wall. <laughs> That's so all right. You're gonna have to do is a strength roll to get it out of there. Rocket, you want to do anything since Kane just whiffed? I'm going to be the floorboard. To take possession of whatever she's grabbing onto. Okay. Uh, it, is a, it, it is yeah, a floorboard. So I'm just going to shake profusely as the floorboard. Okay. All right. Roll strength to shake her off. She, she's an, old, she's a, an older woman, so I don't think it's going to take much. That's oh, funny. that was All a right. nice roll. Fuck All off right. me, Mimo. All right, so the board that she's holding on to immediately begins shaking profusely. And after a few moments, she loses her grip finally and falls through the hole. Now, Purity, you're chasing that guy out through that area. Now, because of the timing of this, uh, this woman falls down. And I'm going to roll to see if she hits this guy. Hell yeah. It's going to be some fucking bowling shit right Oh, now. that's a 19. She does. Um, so that's going to be, so because she's falling from a very, very tall height, I'm going to roll, uh, in total for damage, I'm going to roll four D10s because she, she's falling from a good height. This is how much damage will be done to both of them. 22 damage to each of them. So as she falls down, she falls down to this horrified man who is attempting to run for the door. He can see his way to freedom. And as he's going through that, he just hears a scream from above him, and he looks up for a second as he sees a woman's body falling towards him, and he, she hits him and smashes his body into the ground and just, just absolutely crushes him. And her head smashes into the stone and instantly kills her on impact. They are both dead. Um, so now you are only, uh, there are only two people, I believe, left in the house. Hmm. 
I'm going to hop out of the armor and join everybody else. Okay, you do that. Um, they are still upstairs in the master bedroom. All right, I'm heading up for them. Hey, guys, we, we are doing a really good job. How many more of these things do we have to get rid of? El numero dos. Sweet, we can do this. Should we kill them or just chase them out? Whatever is most hey. Why not both? Sounds good to me. If they survive getting out the door, they survive getting out the door. Yep, as long as they're gone. Um, all right, so you guys can all roll then to see if you can locate the remaining two. Oh, okay. Wow. Ooh. All right, Kane, you can roll too to see if you can locate the last. Uh, the last. Watch two. Kane finally get a twenty. Nope. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Raka. Yeah. All right, Raka. So. Purity and Kane don't really locate anybody, but Raka, you find somebody by themselves in the servants' quarter. Call us and over there, bro. And it appears that he is, uh, he is, looks like he's in like a butler's uniform and it looks like he's looking over a picture of uh, what appears to be the late Baron and he's sort of crying. Aww, oh, let's shit, not my kill bad, him. huh? I, I don't want to offend a person of color. You proceed, sir. Please. Do we have, he's if he was a servant, do we say... have to kick him out? I didn't say he was black. Yes, he's there. Yes, he's there for that. He has to either be scared out of the building. Oh. I didn't say that either. I said he had color. Okay. I'm a ghost. That's everybody to me. I mean, that is fair. We should just, you know, lightly scare him out. Let's not. Let's not kill this one. That's fair. We don't want to commit a hate crime. Well, that and he does take good care of our castle. It's not true. He let them destroy the toilet. To be fair, he's been crying in here. He doesn't know they were doing that. What's he crying over? The dead dude? The first dead dude. The one that the brought all these guys. The former baron of the castle who has passed away. You mean the one you killed? I didn't kill the baron. You can't prove that. No, the, the baron died before the events of this one shot took place. All the people that are there are there to try to claim the castle by staying there for a night, even though it's haunted. Yeah, we were cool with the Baron. Then he died, and now we have to deal with these assholes. Uh, Alright, so you do have him. If you guys want to roll again, you can try and find the other one. Alright, let's scare him away. I'm going to turn into the... I'm going to possess the picture. Okay. Oh, start God. talking to him. <laughs> oh my God! Okay, alright, you do that. Roll a, roll a uh, charisma check to try and fuck with him. You get a plus three as a ghost to that, so that's an 11. So um, I'm going to say you can moderately freak him out, so do whatever you do. Yo, what's up, homie? Huh? Oh, wh what, 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 did you, what did you say? Is that what's up, homie? Let me get a fire of that Gucci shit. Oh. Why, uh, why is... You, you're not the Baron. Why are you talking to me through his picture? It's a sign from God. Jenkins, chop chop, go get me my sticky leaf. Yes, sir. I'll be right back, sir. Uh, he then immediately runs out of the room uh, to the storage area of the building and begins trying to find your quote unquote sticky leaf. Pop my head and just. It gets There's him no in... such thing as sticky leaf. <laughs> yeah, but we need to get him to leave, or do you want to try to kill him? I really don't want to kill him. Oh, that's right. We were supposed to scare him away. Sometimes I can't help myself. Wait till he comes back and then just tell him, Jenkins, please wait outside until tomorrow night. Then we'll give him the castle to him. Uh, Alright, so uh, after a moment, Jenkins comes back and he appears to have taken uh, some leaves off of some uh, indoor plants and covered them with glue to make a sticky leaf. Sir, oh. sir, I've made you a sticky leaf, sir. Where would you like it? Just place it on the mantle there, Jenkins. Yes, sir. And uh, I've changed my mind. I don't want any sticky leaf. I think you should oh. pop a nightcap and then leave this house immediately in the morning. And no, never return. No, to leave before the morning. Oh, oh right, right. Before him, the morning. Tell him to leave and he can come back in sunrise and he can have the castle. You must leave now and then come back at sunrise, and the castle is yours. Wait, what? 
Well, we don't need it for ghosts, and he takes care of the place. We Excuse need a me, living sir. thing here. Excuse me, sir, but who who are you talking to? No, 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 no. no one you need to be concerned with. You, you told me to go have a nightcap and leave. No, you need to leave right now and then come back at sunrise. Yes. Yes, sir. I will leave immediately, sir. Yes, sir. So because Off you he... go, then. Chop, chop. No more chit-chat. So because he uh, he trusts you, he immediately leaves. So he is out the door of his own volition, which technically means he's disqualified. Uh, so now it's just one person left. So you guys can roll to find that one person. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave you to find them. I am the Baron, after all. Are you just going to float around as a picture? <laughs> I mean, he could. That would scare the shit out of people. Uh, can and Rock are just find the last, the last motherfucker. Do I have to roll for it at all? Yeah. Oh, boom, son. Woo! Oh, yeah. Yeah. All, all, Finally! All, th all three of you. All three of you are enough. Um... So, all right, so all of you find the last guy, and it appears that he's he has a hammer, and he's going through the walls, and every once in a while, he's knocking a brick out to see what's behind it. You don't know what exactly he's doing. He doesn't you there, to... sir! Why are you punching holes in my drywall? What the, what the hell are you, you floating picture? You get out of here! I know you, you, you go, sir. And I'm just going to fly right into him and then possess the hammer. Oh, God. Oh, God. Get off of me, sir. Get off of me, sir. All right, you possess the hammer. What are you going to do with the hammer? Hit him. Okay. <laughs> uh, roll, roll strength to fucking hit him because he is still holding it. That is a minus two, which is a 10. I'm going to roll for him to see if he can hang on to it. He's rolling a straight 20. He does not hold on to it. All right, so you you have wrenched it out of his hand, and it's going towards his face. That's one d six damage. So you can roll that. I'll take the other one as your attack roll. All right, so that's two damage. You knock him right in the eye, and he kind of backs Ooh. up and like rips the, the the picture off of his face and drops the hammer. Uh, and he's like, "Oh god damn it, god damn it! I'm just trying to find the fucking body." The what? Did he say the body? Yeah. Hey, see, I feel you, bro. I'm trying to find the booty, too. He can't hear you, can't. You're incorporeal. Oh, he can we hear can't Rocco throw our voices Rocco... all spooky-like? Uh, you can, but you have to tell me you're doing that. Okay, just was wondering. I'll take you out in a minute. But you also can generally converse with one another without actually making noise. I'm going to go into the hole in the wall and just make really creepy sounds at him, like, ooh, okay. you, you disturbed pass... our sleep. Okay, you pass through the hole in the wall, and as you go into the hole in the wall, you actually do find that there is a, there's a crevice, there's like a crawl space or something that's on the other side of the wall in between that and what would be the inner wall. I'm going to follow um, that and explore. Uh, well, that's what I mean. When you go in there, you find that there is actually a body in there. What the fuck? Guys, there's an actual dead body in here! Who put this here? So what? We're all dead. No, I mean, it's not one of... Hmm. Why are the humans looking for a dead body? Go ask... Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw my voice out of there. Human! Living! Thing! What? There's a dead body in here. What the hell is going on? Oh, thank you. I was looking for that. Need to dispose of it before somebody else takes over the castle. You know the raunchy bitch. How are you in the wall? Uh, I am the dead body. Hi. Oh, Why did you put me well, in here? Well, you were dead. At least I thought you were. Why'd you kill me, bro? Because you were a bitch and you were going to steal all our money. Oh, I fair enough. You. All right, so Kane, I'm just gonna pop up one of the hands and just wave outside the wall. Okay, <laughs> you're gonna pop out the dead, like skeletal, like yes. flesh conjoined hand and just wave at him. So, <laughs> I'm gonna roll for his sanity for a minute because he thinks that it's, there's a living person in the wall right now. <laughs> oh, he rolled a one. <laughs> he immediately shits himself. Oh, please, for the love of God, um, tell me this is gonna get animated. And he is, you know, it, of course it is, it's D&D &D night. Um, and uh, Kane, you have the option to do something here, because Rock has already done something, and so is Purity, so what are you going to do to fuck with him? 
Dan, you there? What can I do? Uh, that's a good question. There's you more of the body. Have, you still the have question is what things. can't you do? That's true. That, that's true. There is a lot of things you can do as a ghost. Let's see. Let me look at my God. Ghost I cannot shooting. wait to see this scene animated. Well, this will be a um, this will be a super size. I figured bit. it's going to be amazing. Almost done with episode eight. I'm a little over halfway there. So, uh, are you just looking at your sheet, Kane? Yeah, I think I'm going to try withering touch out. Okay. All right, you can do that on touch. So, and because you're incorporeal, I'm not going to make you roll for it. So, you can just literally touch him. I'm going to touch one of his legs. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, you can touch <laughs> one of his legs. Roll the damage. It's 4d6 plus 3. 4d6. Plus three, goddamn. Ooh. Nah, okay. 11? That was uh, 11? Yeah, that would be 11. All right, so you grab onto his leg, and immediately after your withering touch kicks in, his foot starts to disintegrate, which is when he starts screaming. Um, and it slowly starts working its way up, first with the foot, then it goes to his knee, to his hip, and then up, and then it starts going at his, like, vital organs, and it stops <laughs> after it's disintegrated half of his torso. He is extremely dead. And every single person has been cleared out of the castle by either being killed or being driven out due to fear. Which means that nobody technically gets the castle. Now, you guys are successful, so you get to party up and do all your ghost things overnight and animate zombies and do any horrible things. Woo! I'm going. I'm still trying to figure out why there's a body here. Damn it! Well, I mean, I know why, but now I got to get out of the wall, and this is going to be such a night. Fuck it! I'm leaving it for the living. Okay. I'm still going to uh, wave around wait, the hand. Wait, wait, wait! We we can easily get it out. One of us possesses one leg. Kane possesses the other leg, and then you possess the torso, and then we can walk it out the door. Sounds good to me. Let's do this because we can scare anyone that's in within area. Let's do it. They'll make they'll think zombies are real again. It sounds like a lot of work. All right, so this is what how we're gonna do it, Gabe. I go first, and then after, and then I say go, and then you go. All right. And she so just kind of sits there and makes sure the torso stays upright so we don't fall down. All right, so I'm gonna let all you all you possess because it's a, it's a dead body, so I'll count it as an uh, an inanimate object, kind of. Uh, so what's going to happen is you're going to have to like pull your way out through the hole in the wall, um, which isn't going to be too, too difficult, but all three of you are going to need to roll strength checks and I'm just going to do a combined score. Ooh, okay. That's good. Do we all do it? Yeah. Yeah. As I said, everybody. Ooh, that leg's dragging. Ooh, so is the other one. Um, no, I, I'm the I'm the torso, so I'm just waving back and forth to freak people yeah, out as we walk. So, you're, well, that was I think you you were, you were doing it strength to pull yourself out of the wall. So, but eventually you do. So, because uh, Rock have rolled high enough, so um, you guys are just kind of shambling out, and you shamble out the front door, um, and then proceed to uh, kind of shamble through the grounds. And there are still a few people that are outside. Uh, the three women that ran out earlier are still out there, and they see this. And they immediately freak the fuck out and run for the front gate. Now, the front gate it also appears to be locked. Uh, so they're, they're like, desperately trying to do it. So they're trying to climb over it. And it's one of those gates where uh, the, the cast iron rods are through it, and it has spikes on it. Um, so they're going to try and go over, so I'm going to see how many of them actually make it over and how many get impaled. I'm going to throw my voice, come give Auntie a kiss! Alright, so two, so two of them <laughs> make it over, uh, with 16s. The third one, however, uh, accidentally slips and stabs her leg through one of the spikes. So she's kind of stuck there, and she's freaking the fuck out. Um, oh, I'm going to say dear. that's one I'm going to say that's 1d8 damage, which is 8 damage, which means she's losing blood at a pretty rapid rate. She's probably going to die. Uh, the other two are immediately running out, and uh, Neville has uh, the the butler, or whatever you've named him, 
Uh, he is uh, he is off getting a nightcap, so he is not in the courtyard at the moment. But uh, the other one who is stabbed is basically screaming, and eventually she passes out and just hangs. I'd say we did a good job tonight, and gentlemen. Yes, we did. Yes, you did. Uh, so you shamble back inside, and the next morning, the carnage is found by the uh, the caretaker of the estate, um, a man named. Uh, for him, I'm going to just call him Jeeves. Uh, so Jeeves uh, comes back and sees what has happened, and immediately gets everything cleaned up. And then he looks at the uh, at the will of Baron Delnor, who is the former owner of the castle, who is deceased. And he crosses all of the names off except for one. And he looks at the bottom of the page. Well, it appears there's only one person left who could possibly claim this castle as their own. Unfortunately, he couldn't show up tonight. But if we can locate him, we can put him through the same thing and see if it works. It appears he's a thief from the fire sand wastes. His name is Gregor? Hmm. All right, well, we'll send a messenger raven out there soon enough, and we'll get his attention. Then he'll have to come and try and claim the property. And that's where we're going to end it, because you guys know exactly who that is. I don't. I know you don't because you're not part of the main campaign. Bernie Greenstein. No, that is not Bernie Greenstein. Oh, uh, it is Gregor, the the thief that you guys picked up, the one that helped you rescue the princess, the one that. Oh, I talk like this. Oh I'm yeah. Baby. And the one that take and and Kane uh, tongue punched him in the butthole. There's usually butt stuff in these campaigns. I always yeah, say. usually can't go wrong with good butt stuff. Though. That that did happen though. You did you did use your use your frog tongue to punch his butthole. You guys are uh, weird. So uh, all right, so that was that was the end of that. So you guys did a lot of horrible things. That really did just turn into prop hunt the game, but it was fun. It was the best type of prop hunt the game. Right, I am well, personally thanks. very happy with my skeleton hands. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for participating. Thank you for coming out tonight. Thank everybody for watching. Purity, thank you for streaming. Um, 